What we have in front of us here is a scarlet covered box decorated with narcissus plants and it's deeply carved into wood and covered with layer upon layer of coloured lacquer. As you probably know, lacquer is a sap bled from a tree, rather like rubber, and the initial sap when it's collected is rather toxic and you score the side of a tree for the tree sap to be collected and then you colour it, in the case of red, with cinnabar and in the case of black, with carbon. And it was heat treated to prevent it from being toxic. And then it's layered upon layered upon layered. Each layer takes about 24 hours to dry. And then you carve through the lacquer to create your design and finally it's burnished. Something like this lacquer box would have taken at least a year to produce and it was probably made in the Guoyuancheng in Beijing, which is part of the Forbidden City. It's a specific lacquer producing workshop which was in operation during the Yongle and Xuanda era. And they produce lacquerware for the palace, but also for presentation as diplomatic gifts. This is a modern piece of lacquer, and it isn't really lacquer at all, but painted. It has an early 15th century design and I actually bought it at Beijing Airport. But when we look at this, the design is very flat, the carving is very shallow and it has a very um, bright red colour and a, and a, a black uh, inside. But when we look at a real piece from the early 15th century, it has this fantastic sculptural quality this is very typical of the early 15th century, that the, the edges are not rough at all and they're completely three-dimensional. So when you look at a flower, you have different depths for the petals, for the stamen, for the inner parts of the flower, and also for the petals and the, and the stalk. Each part of the flower looks like you could reach out and touch it, and it's completely beautiful. If you look at an 18th century copy of an early 15th century piece, it's much flatter. Colours aren't so beautiful and it doesn't have this extraordinary three-dimensional quality to the carving and these lovely smooth edges to the design. There's something very perfect about early 15th century forms and that's one of the reasons why we focused on this for the exhibition. The other reason why we focused on this particular box for the exhibition is that we wanted to bring together a group of lacquerwares which would have been of the type that were presented to the Ashikaga court in Japan in the early 15th century. We know the Japanese liked lacquer very much, particularly red carved lacquer, and it seems that the Yongle and Shanda emperors picked carved lacquer as uh, an ideal diplomatic gift to present to the Ashikaga court. There's correspondence which survives showing these um, presents that were made in the early 15th century. I think a lot of um, local Japanese versions of these lacquerwares were produced and certainly that they are still admired today. So they had an influence on the material culture of Japan as a result of the exchange. What I find fascinating is that there were specific gifts for specific courts. Chinese lacquerware doesn't appear to have been presented in large quantities, for example, to the Middle East, but Chinese decorated papers were, which you find with Islamic poems and um, other stories on the top of the Chinese decorated paper, whereas in Japan it appears to have been lacquerware which were more favoured. And they seem to have understood in a very early way um, differentiations of goods for different markets. They're specifically gearing the goods that they're manufacturing and presenting to the different markets. I think what the material culture of the early 15th century demonstrates is an extraordinary confidence on behalf of the emperors and the courts across China. Mm -hmm.